This Scribble Kibble tutorial will show you how to animate 2D characters that have texture in a bunch of different ways. We will make a textured puppet character, paint texture onto animation frames, and apply texture to a traditionally animated character with a special effects program. I use Adobe software, but this chart shows common non-Adobe programs that can, for the most part, do what I'm going to do in this tutorial. For a textured puppet, when you build your character, be aware of where different pieces meet, because when the joints move, the texture will move with them, and if your texture is poorly designed, this is the result. The textures grind against each other. You'll notice this in Bojack Horseman, where his neck meets his chest. Normally, his clothes cover the crease, so think of things like that to hide your joints. If you can't hide them, try adding a soft fade to the joint location on the top piece. You can create highly detailed puppet pieces in Photoshop by hand drawing them. When you do this, you can use texture brushes, apply pattern overlays, just go crazy. Once finished, import puppet pieces to Animator After Effects, build your rig, and animate it. Don't want to paint? Well, in Adobe Animate, you can use raster-based textures as a fill or a brush. For fill, click the Paint Bucket tool, and in the Color panel, use the drop-down to select Bitmap Fill. And here's a texture I made in Photoshop. I'll import that. Now, click the area you want to fill with the Paint Bucket. The graphic automatically tiles. You can rotate, scale, and skew the pattern by choosing the Gradient Transform tool and then clicking on the fill area. Animate is not going to remember the transformations you make, so if you adjust one pattern, you are going to have to manually change it everywhere unless you use the eyedropper tool and allow lock fill. So the best thing to do is design a bitmap fill that you're not going to need to transform in your animation. Notice when I use the bucket that the fill pattern follows my character. If you want the fill pattern to stay on the same place on the stage, then when you click the Paint Bucket tool, you need to select the Lock Fill modifier. And here's the difference. Everything I just said about the Bucket tool also works for the Brush tool. One very time-consuming way to texturize your character is to paint every single animation frame by hand. This is really easy to do in a program like TV Paint, or if you happen to be animating directly in Photoshop, GIMP, or some other painting program. Otherwise, you need to first export your animation frames from your animation program in order to paint them. Here is Wime Time's character. To export it as frames, File, Export, Export Movie. Make a separate folder for all the PNG images you're about to create, and save. Go over to Photoshop and click File, Open, and click the first frame of your exported animation. Check the Image Sequence box. Photoshop will automatically create a timeline. You need to click Window Timeline in order to see it, though. And a quick note for the pros, converting the timeline to frames does not work anymore, so this is how to paint in Timeline View. Go to Layer, Video Layers, New Blank Video Layer, and drag your layer outside of the current video group. Then in the timeline, you can bring that clip to be above your character. Paint on this new layer. If you want control over multiple layers, then make more blank video layers and repeat the process. You can group your painting layers to your character layer so they don't bleed outside the character boundaries. Now notice when I go to the next frame, the character is not moving yet, but the painting layer disappears because it's a new frame. You want a duplicate of the painting you just did on the previous frame, so to do that, Go back to the previous frame, and then click Layer, Video Layers, Duplicate Layer. While you're painting, you can also use onion skinning. To turn it on, click the Menu button on the corner of the timeline window. Here's your onion skin, and here are your onion skin settings. If you want, you can apply FX overlays to the entire character animation layer. They won't move with the character, though. Look at this hideous paint job. Let's save it. Click the arrow in the timeline window, or go to File, Export, Render Video. You can save this as a video file, but only some kinds of formats are going to support the alpha channel, which means your transparent background. Note that video files with transparent backgrounds are very large file size, and they're not always compatible with low-level video editing software. So your other option is to make a PNG sequence, just like you did to export your animation. So change this setting to Photoshop. 
Transparency is important if you're going to be putting your character animation on top of a background, so pretty much all the time you want transparency. So make sure your alpha channel is something other than none. String your saved images together in your video editing program and place the character animation layer on top of your background. If you're using Windows Movie Maker, iMovie, or a lower level video editing program, you have to do something like this. Put all of the images into your timeline and then set the duration to a fraction of a second. A quick texture technique you can do is place a static texture over your character. The problem with this is it looks like the character is moving through the texture since the texture layer doesn't actually move. For this quick method, go to After Effects, duplicate your character animation layer. Drag your texture onto the timeline underneath the duplicate. Set the track mat to alpha. If you can't see track mat, click these sneaky icons on the bottom left. If you want a slightly different looking style, you can try tweening the static texture layer to follow the character when it moves. Animators get around the problem of the previous textured method by creating an animated texture. The key to making animated textures is to not have a massive difference between each frame, otherwise the effect is very jarring. I'll do a quick one by painting the frame a couple of different times with the same brush and making a movie file out of the images. Meh, it'll do. Import your animated texture into After Effects, and then right click on the texture, go to Interpret Footage, Main, and set your loop to 100 or some large number. Drag the texture onto the timeline underneath a duplicated copy of your character animation layer and set the texture track mat to Alpha. Again, if you can't see the track mat, turn it on here. Fiddle with the settings until you're happy. Now this is the important part. An animated texture on a character that's not moving is ugly. So let's make the texture not move when the character's not moving. Right click the texture layer and go to Time, Enable Timer Mapping. Now that timer mapping is turned on, go to your animated texture layer and add a keyframe at the location where your character is frozen in place and a new keyframe where it starts moving. Click the frozen in place keyframe and hit Ctrl C to copy the keyframe properties. Then click on the starts moving keyframe and press Ctrl V to paste the properties. Now the texture is only animated where it should be. Manually go through and repeat this process at each stop and start point. Happy? Good. Play around with the settings until it looks cool. that's enough texture. I'm done with texture. Keep experimenting from here and you'll find lots of different ways to put texture on 2D animations. If you've mastered the art of textures, there's lots more you can learn from Scribble Kibble tutorial episodes. Just look for the ones with the yellow icon or check the website. And if you show up on a Friday, there will be a new episode for you to watch. <laughs> <laughs>